Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, as you saw, we are going to talk about the prevention of child abuse and warning signs and everything that you need to look for to keep our children safe. However, before I begin, as usual, we need to get the whole business thing out of the way. If you have a question for our guests, whom you will meet momentarily, you can always give us a call at 781 781- what is the number? 270-9199. I never call, so I never remember the number. Or you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. Love to get mail. So if you have a question for our guests or suggested for a future, future topic, please let me know. I would like to thank the crew for this evening. We are small but mighty tonight. We have Chris Flaherty, who is a staff member here, making sure that everything runs smoothly. Jolie Atwood, who just had a birthday, so we we didn't sing, but we did have a cake for her. So happy birthday, Jolie. And we have Colleen Moore, who is also giving up her Wednesday night to come and hang out with us. Last but definitely not least, I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Hopefully the math homework went smoothly this evening. Now, I would like to introduce my wonderful guests. We have Adrienne Simeone, who has been on the show before. Yes, thank you for having us. So, thank you for coming back. And Jenna Lloyd, who is a newcomer to the organization, as well as to BCAT. Well, thank you guys both for coming up. Thank you. We're excited. So, as I begin all of my shows, can you just guys give me like the five cent tour of where you grew up, how you came to the Burlington area, and how you decided to get involved in a community cause like Mama Bear Effect. So I've, this year, actually, I have been a Burlington resident for 10 years. So I'm kind of like a, a Burlington, a Burlingtonian You're at this point now. Turning into a um, townie. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm old school now. Um, and, you know, child abuse, I feel like, is one of those causes where I, we all feel like there needs to be more to be done about it, but we just kind of don't know what. And so for me, you know, just after becoming a parent myself, you know, it just kind of opened my eyes to the reality of what these children are going through. And when you see your own children and other people's children and and you just realize how innocent they are, you Mm. know, and even as we go through our own childhoods, we're not necessarily thinking of ourselves that way. We're always wanting to be older, more mature, independent. And, and, you know, and when you see other children as a parent, it just, it just changes Mm -hmm. your view of the world. And so it kind of exposed me, you know, to the emotional rawness of, you know, acknowledging that reality. And that, that's pretty much what inspired me is really wow. becoming a parent. Um, I think a lot changes after you become a parent, become a parent. Yes. Um, because you really don't understand it. You don't get it until you actually yeah. have this living, breathing exactly. thing in front of you. That that's, they just trust with you. Yeah. You can just give birth to a baby and leave the hospital and you know it's the rest is kind of there you go yeah Yeah, you (laughs) know (laughs) no training yeah you know just here you go have a kid so jenna what's your story short no um (laughs) actually uh nine years in burlington i'll wait for the movie to come out in um november 10 years in burlington now um great community we're we're so happy to be here um, I actually got involved with Mama Bear Effect when our daughters started school together. Um, I met Adrian, and, you know, doing the, the mom talk, what do you do, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And she was talking about the Mama Bear Effect, and I'm like, well, what's that? And, you know, having children of my own, I never really, not that I didn't think to talk about it. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't it's not, that. It, you're in your bubble. Right. Um, and and then, no one's telling you to talk to them about no. it until you meet me. Right. <laughs> and, and it was like, you know, I, I was sitting there like, well, you know, you have these you, your kids you have, you tell them they have to wear a helmet when they ride a bike, you know, to and brush my your kids teeth don't to, listen prevent, to, me. to prevent cavities. But it's like you never think to educate them about, you know, body safety. And so I, you know, went through the website and looked at all the the pages, um, and there's some amazing coloring tools in there, and that's what actually got me started to talk to my own children hmm. about it. Um, the coloring pages helped me to, to where do I begin? Here it is. It's perfect. Right. Um, and then it is such there, a big scope of there's a lot of information, and some of it's really scary. So how do you simplify it enough and not really dumb it down but make it 
comprehensible age and age appropriate. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and it's and Adrian did a phenomenal Without scaring job them. doing that, you know, so that a parents have a starting point to discuss it with their children. Um, and then from there, I, I just kind of was like, you know, I, I want to do more. I want to be a voice for kids that can't be heard. Excellent. So Mama Bear Effect is four years old now? Actually six. Six? Six years Holy old cow. A lot has happened in six years. Wow. Because yes. you were on my show like the very first year that I did it. And yeah. then we I had an anniversary like, like one year later. Yes. When was the anniversary? You were very pre well. You were not, maybe was not very two, it was pregnant. Two years ago, <laughs> I was pregnant with you my th three, almost four year old. She, wow. Okay. Yes. Ah, so that was a while wow. Ago. Okay. Yes. And then Reality then check. Ago, you know, yeah. once you hit a certain age, we just stop aging, and yeah, time and then just. Yeah, I think the last time I was on, I was a month shy of being pregnant with my last baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> so lots of babies have happened. Wow. Yes. But, um, so what was your question? I can't remember. So Mama Bear Effect yes. has been around for six years. How did it come about? And, you know, where did you get the name? Where did you, you know, yeah, all these materials are great to distribute, but how did you, like, come up with the cohesiveness? Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we are just kind of meant to fall into a certain purpose. And when I was growing up, I felt like I wanted to find a purpose in my life. So a way to give back to the world. Wow. Okay. Um, How profound. <laughs> and so for a while, I kind of didn't know what it was. So if a friend of mine was running a marathon, I would make a donation. You know, if people were doing other things, I would support them. And I was still, you know, open to that opportunity. So um, I think my first purpose I knew was that I wanted to be a, a parent. And, you know, and then I think that led me to the realization about, you know, that child abuse is such a real issue. And it's really hard to tackle. How do we, how do we, how do mm. we address this issue if it's not something that we're necessarily going to see? Um, it mostly right. happens behind closed doors. So, you know, just through people that I've known, um, a few years after we moved in t to our house in Burlington across the street, a graphic designer moved in. And, you know, she does amazing graphic design mm. work. And then I also uh, made friends with an interior designer, and we were all kind of networking. And I remember a conversation we were having um, during a meeting because I was helping her with some marketing work because that's what I used to do before was marketing and sales. And she had talked about being a mama bear for her daughter, that mm. she went to pick her daughter up at preschool or somewhere she was picking okay. her up. And there was a man, like, smoking a cigarette not mm. too far from the entrance of the building. And she was like, normally I wouldn't have said anything, but she was like, that's not right. I don't want all these kids breathing in cigarette yeah. smoke. And so she's like, she's like, you know how your mama bear just comes out, you know? And I kind of researched it a little bit, and it, it's, it's a biological reaction really? that people okay. have. And it's actually hmm. specific to animals that are nursing, hmm. like a bear, that when they are nursing a newborn, there is a chemical reaction in their body that wow. makes them more aggressive. That wow. makes them stronger. Rare. Knew that. Yes. So but it's honestly, actually. Yeah. It makes makes sense. Wow. Right? And okay. That's, but I mean, and that doesn't have to be the case. We don't have to be nursing our babies to feel like defenders. And a lot yeah. of people feel like mama bears for kids, even if it's not their own kids. Yeah. They just feel like they're going to protect these kids, and they don't care who they're going to offend. Mm -hmm. And so, learning about child sexual abuse, it's not so much that we can't prevent it. It's that people don't want to talk about it. And so, therefore, that's what's enabling it's this abuse. Oh, yes. okay. It's huge. It's a huge problem. Wow. So I kind of took it as a marketing challenge, is how do we take this issue that people don't want to talk about and inspire people to be, be want to mm. be part of the solution? Okay. So draw from a strength. Draw from a positive. That this is not something that we're afraid of. This is about us doing what is necessary to protect innocent children. Uh. And okay. so that's kind of Put where it all came spin about. On it. So, you know, just that conversation inspired that in my head. And then I reached out to Laura of Design Invasion, who lives across the street from me. And okay. she does, I mean, when I saw mm -hmm. her work, I was like, oh, my goodness. Wow. Like, okay, you're the real deal. And I was, I was like, can you, do you want to? do a logo for me and she's like I am going to do a logo for you <laughs> and it's oh, gorgeous just you I don't wait. know if I can show this but it's um, amazing this is the logo that she did for us and she's won a few um, design awards for this logo 
So, wow. you know, yeah. it's the papa bear. So it's an award winning. It's a papa bear, a mama bear, and then a baby bear in oh, there. Oh, okay. I thought it was mama baby and the baby yeah, had a little no, stuffed animal. Yeah, the papa bear's there. And the, you, know, you can see the claws out. They're not that scary, but, you know, they're well, there. Well, bears don't have retractable claws right. anyway, yeah, so they're, they're always, always out. out. <laughs> Our claws are always out. But, um, you know, and it's like a circle of safety. That this child oh. is completely protected by the men and women in this world that are committed to. Now, was she able to come up with that on her own, she or did, did you have to like? On her own. I had no input whatsoever, and I have wow. full faith in everything that she does. Um, you know, it's like because like the whole circle and yeah, safety she, thing. I'm like, you didn't have to prep. It's like her a on yin that? yang. It's beautiful. Wow. She's, I mean, she's very, very talented. That so, is really cool. Um, it's amazing. So that is a, you know what I mean? All these little things have just kind of come together. And I have a cousin who is a lawyer, um, and he helped us uh, network with some lawyers based here in Boston to okay. file the paperwork to become a corporation and then the 501c3. 501 okay. um, and so it didn't cost us anything. And it was the easiest thing to do. They wow. basically, you know, had some phone conversations with me, and, and we worked hmm. through it. And then they've helped us trademark the logo. Wow. We have trademarked the first awareness ribbon for the prevention of child sexual abuse. There wasn't wow. one before. Um, and we recently, oh, Is that like a particular shade of green? It's kind of like a, a lime. It's a chartreuse. It's a chartreuse. Okay. PMS code 390C <laughs> for all those graphic designers watching. Lauren. Of course. Yes. But, um, you know. That was my next guess. Yes. <laughs> But it's, it's not really that similar to any other shades that are used with other awareness oh, okay. ribbons. Um, because I know, like, there's a lot of blue awareness ribbons out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't even know if there's actually ever been uh, an awareness ribbon trademark for child abuse mm. prevention. But that was one of the first awareness ribbons ever put out was by a grandmother who had lost one of her, ch her grandchildren oh, wow. um, from abuse. And she um, put a blue ribbon on her antenna of her car just to you know, start wow. to raise awareness for that, and so that's actually what inspired um, All the, the blue ribbons, ribbons yeah. to, uh, to, for child abuse prevention. Wow. Was one okay. woman, you know, and people would ask her what was the ribbon for, and it just kind of uh, grew on its own, which I think is really beautiful. Cool. Now, speaking of child abuse versus child sexual abuse, what made you decide to go that extra step? Because there is a lot of child abuse, unfortunately, in our society. So why did you want to differentiate? Or was that a conscious decision or was it just kind of the way everything, you know, the whole yin yang thing? I felt I had more power in my ability to work to prevent child sexual abuse because child sexual abuse is primarily um, affected by a lack of awareness. And okay. unfortunately, a lot of child abuse is perpetrated by parents. So it's hard to protect a child from abuse that's going on in their very own home. Okay. It's not that these people don't um, you know, have the right tools necessarily to protect their children. They're the ones harming their children. Oh, okay. So when it comes to sexual abuse, I felt like there was a lot of work that could be done because it's not that most of these parents don't love their children. It's that they have no idea that this is even a risk or they're not willing to accept that it's a risk. Um, and so, therefore, they don't necessarily have the tools to talk to their children okay. or to even think about how to go about protecting their child. And plus, I think on the last time you appeared, you said, I might not be remembering this correctly, but most of the child's sexual abuse takes place, like, in a small family circle, like right. uncles or grandparents right. or people something. people you trust your children So, with. you know, your parent, as a parent, you're like, oh... There's nothing wrong with, you know, Uncle Joe. I mean, he's a nice guy. And then, you know, it turns out that Uncle Joe really isn't mm -hmm. so nice. I so, think it's really hard for people to accept that. It really is. And, and it it's almost, you know, pushes them not to believe it. So it's like creating that circle of safety for your kids mm -hmm. and also making family members aware that you discuss body safety rules, that you discuss, you know, protecting your children from this gives them the aware that, okay, they're on top of it. They're, you know, mm -hmm. it's not going to go unnoticed if, you know, right. something happens. So it raises the awareness to the innocent people, but also the perpetrators. warns yeah. the right. perpetrators, don't eat, don't mess with the mama right. bear. Right. And, yeah. and that's what, don't mess with me. That's what convicted child molesters have, have said, that if they were looking for a family to target, that they were not going to choose the one 
if they knew those parents were aware of that kind of stuff. They was like saying, you know, if you're going to rob a house, are you going to rob the house with the police car parked out in front? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you know? And so that's how I think of it too, you know, like if you have an, an alarm company and they give you that little sign to put in your yard mm -hmm. or there's stickers on the okay. window, why do they give you those? Because it is a deterrent. It's giving, it. I mean, why would you leave your doors unlocked? We don't. We well, lock I think, the doors. You know, you know um, with women being attacked, you know, in parking lots or jogging, you know, ponytail, mm -hmm. easy target. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody with long hair, or, you know, short hair, right. there's nothing to grab onto. So mm -hmm. it's like, make yourself more difficult to... Right. Got it. Yep. Anything that we can do to, uh, you know, okay. let them know that, you know, we're not going to allow ourselves to be a, a, an easy target. You know, I think that's something that everyone should be doing. You know, and especially like in school systems, uh, I think okay. as we, you know, if you heard about that story in Harwich um, no. on the Cape... They were... Um, I don't watch the news anymore. Yeah. Ever since, you know, well, my, I think right after my daughter was born, um, the town where I grew up out in Western Mass, there was somebody that was convicted of trying to sell their child for $25 so he could buy beer. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I can't watch the yeah. news anymore. You I, know, I if, get email updates of child sexual abuse stories across the country and stories relating to child abuse specific to mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Sometimes I can't read them because it is upsetting to me. It's not. This isn't something that you know I have yeah. created a shield. Right. You know, it, it breaks me down sometimes. But I mean, this was Massachusetts, so I wanted to well, yeah. understand. The, but the situation was, um, he wasn't their teacher. He was some form of I teacher's I aide was an or art teacher an art teacher. Oh, was he? A he was like support taking staff? children and isolating them in a dark room and molesting them in this room. Mm. And I'm thinking, how is this man? able to gain access to these children without specific purpose yeah. that there is a room that exists that is dark that he is allowed to take children into yeah and this happened to multiple children wow and so it's, it's just one of those things what are what are our what are school systems doing to raise awareness with staff and teachers mm -hmm. that this is something that we're not going to tolerate and we have certain protocol about how we expect people adults especially to handle our, these children um, because we're trusting them uh, with our children right. for, you know, six to eight hours a day, you know, before school care, after school care. Mm -hmm. And I think that parents have a, a right to know that they're doing the absolute best. Uh, and we also have a responsibility to ask these questions. Oh, so okay. I, have, um, I, I have posed these questions to the superintendent's office, and they actually have begun some training with Excellent. teachers. Yep. Um, through a volunteer online program that's going oh, to be uh, hopefully cool. uh, further introduced to other um, school teachers systems as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, speaking of tools and online, we want parents, or your mission is to educate parents. Mm -hmm. How do they do? How how do you do that? What is your? You know, how do you get your word out? I mean, compiling the information and then disseminating the information. Well, when, we, when I first started this organization, I did a ton of research. I did a lot of book uh, reading and online uh, like uh, case studies and you know if, like, reports and uh, took some online training programs like Darkness to Light. I wanted to see everything that was out there. And when I, when I did that, I found that some places had really great information. Other places had other great information that wasn't covered by the other guys. And so I wanted to Did create... you get, like, conflicting information, too, as A much? A little bit. Some of the, some of the conflicting information is more, like, outdated from, like, the 80s uh, and 90s, okay. like, teaching children that they should yell no and run away from someone. It's not mm. very likely uh, they're going to run away from their own parents yeah. or their babysitter or their grandparent or their teacher. So if they, they do that kind of education with kids, it mm -hmm. can put a level of shame and responsibility on that child uh, that okay. I didn't say no and it happened. It's and my this fault. This is all my fault. And right. now I can't tell anyone because they're going to be mad at me. Right. So if we can't expect adults to defend themselves, which they shouldn't because there's right. this freeze response that is very common for people uh, because even a lot of rape that is you know perpetrated between adults is by someone that person trusted. Mm -hmm. These are not strangers grabbing us in the middle of the you right. know, a dark alley. It's it's your friend that you right. like have known and you would never have expected this person to do that to you. Yeah. So 
Um, and, and society at large still has a lot of awareness. Shaming the victim. Through. It's, 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 it's everywhere. rampant. It is so sad. It is rampant. And Even it, it happens like, with children, too. Right. There's a lot of victims. It's, it's kind of mind-blowing that this, this is going on to the extent that it is. But so creating the Mama Bear Effects website, I wanted to create a, a place where all this information could be easily accessible, free. I didn't want this to be something where, oh, pay for our video or do this. Let's just get, make the information free. We need to protect children. Let's not make this any harder for people than it has to be. Right. Okay. And, you know, so we, I created this age by age guide and then free downloads, coloring pages, access to other websites for further resources. Oh, okay. So it's pretty extensive at this point. Cool. And Yeah, absolutely. And so then people wanted to know how they could do more within their own community. So I was thinking, what, what can I do? Because this is really what I want to do. I, I don't want people just to come to the Mama Bear Effect. The Mama Bear Effect, in essence, is people being you advocates want, within like their own community. like a springboard it's, to, it's, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a movement. So I need to give these people tools mm -hmm. to help them raise awareness. So the first year or two, I went and printed like 10,000 door hangers that had oh. awareness information okay. on it. And so I put it out there that they were free, cover the shipping, we will ship them to you, put them on the door knobs of people on your street. You don't have to knock on anyone's door, just, you know, just put them out there. And okay. so within two years, we had gone through all 10,000. Wow. And so then, you know, people were making donations to us. And so, you know, and slowly, and I, and I have been donating a lot of our, you know, fun. My, hus my husband wanted yeah. me to get a job. I got a job, and it cost us money. So, <laughs> hmm, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> but it's okay. He's, he's an amazing supporter. Um, so we started doing printed materials, rack cards, you know, for doctor's offices, oh, okay. and little info cards. You know, people will just, some parents are so awesome. If they see another parent on the bus, you know, heading home, they'll be like, here, I want you to know about this organization. You know, I see you have kids. Like, I wow. just want to hand this. I mean, sometimes I feel like these people have more courage than I have. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, I don't want to bother you, but I uh, I am an advocate for child sexual abuse prevention. You know, I'm like, here, have a parent pack. Here. So now I try, you know, I do like if I buy something on a yard sale page, I'm like, and by the way, I also want to give you this because <laughs> I, I feel like I need to protect your children. So the, some of the people that I have okay. come to know across the country have inspired me to do wow. a better job myself. So. so across the country, do you travel for this or is it? Not yet, but someday, <laughs> hopefully soon, maybe. I'll, it'll be like a vacation. Hi, husband. I have yeah. to go to Paris now. <laughs> but that's the amazing thing about um, social media and the Internet now is because, I mean, she ma mails parent packs to Alaska, all over wow. the place, Minnesota, I mean, throughout the entire country. Mm -hmm. And we just did um, a conference for yes. all these CASA advocates, which CASA is oh. court-appointed special advocates. They advocate for children in the foster care system. Oh, so they okay. just so happened to be having their annual um, convention in Boston a couple yeah. weeks ago. So we set up a booth for like two How days. How convenient. It yes. Was great. Yeah, so it was pretty awesome. Wow. Especially when you had people that were so excited to see, you know, yeah. you know, oh, you're the yeah. mama bear. People fact, that, I know that you. knew so us. So you're the mama yes. bear. Right. Okay. Oh, I'm from Oregon. Yeah. You know, Oregon, wow. I, I am on your website all the time. Yeah. Right? And then you go on there and you see how much stuff they share because there really isn't a lot of prevention posts on social media. You know, I, I feel like until I started this, I had never seen anything. I had never seen anything. Mm -mm. You know, and then I and then it's kind of an eye opener because then when you start to share stuff, you see so who you see who responds. Yeah. But then you see who doesn't. You know what I mean? You kind of yeah. see that silence. Mm. Okay. So, you know, when, when you create a when you create a nonprofit organization and then you invite your friends to like the Facebook page okay. and then they don't. You're kind of like, well, what's that about? You know, but that's that's the reality of this. But that's yeah. still the whole taboo about it, though. Yeah. So even with, I know, never give it much like, thought. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. But some people don't want to talk about it. So, I mean, I know people that don't even bring it up to me at all. Wow. Like, it's just not even in the in the conversation whatsoever. So, you know, it's it, it, I, in the beginning years, I felt like there was some disappointment. But I realize that's part of the game. Right. You know, that's part of the whole situation is uh, that okay. we all have disappointments about who has the courage to face this issue. And so when you find those people, you know, like Jenna, that are w like saying, hey, can I can I help you out? And I'm like, are, are you, you for real? You want to like, you want to like, okay, wear this, what do you, you know? want? 
Yeah. Well, let's <laughs> okay. Steps, all right. I'm going to give you a bunch of work to do now. Okay. So, you know. You're going to regret you know? that. No. <laughs> but I mean, the people that are in this cause that are fighting for this mission are some of the most compassionate, just really truly uh, empathetic, empathetic people in the in the world. So cool. you really make great connections, you know, Excellent. doing this type of work. Now you had mentioned that the ten thousand door hangers, you had fronted the money, and people are slowly making donations. Does the Mama Bear Effect do fundraisers? And if so, what are they? Well, I mean, we've done some local fundraisers. It's okay. kind of like a little, a mix of both. Okay. Um, most of our money is is raised through national donations. Oh wow. Okay. Um, we have done some online fundraising campaigns, mm -hmm. and so people have like you you kind of create a fundraising team, oh, and okay. people make donations. And actually, the really cool thing nowadays is that Facebook does this thing where you, you like donate your birthday. You know, have you yes. seen those? Yep. Oh, so I people seen. Oh, are like, oh, I support that. this nonprofit for my birthday, and so. You know, I see people doing this, and I'm like, I don't even, I don't even know this person. I've never mm -hmm. had communication with mm -hmm. these people, but yet, you know, they know of us. They support our work, wow. and it's when they do that, it makes our job so much easier because most of our, my, most of my focus is creating more prevention education materials, or making them better, or reaching out to other nonprofits that need our materials and they don't know that we exist. Oh, okay. So, I, I, there's not enough time in the day to get the work done. And I mean, even especially as Jenna, with four kids. right? Especially with four children. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. That's something I've heard that apparently having four children <laughs> is makes hard. life a little challenging. Yeah. Um, but so I mean, even as much work as you, I've put on you. I mean, I couldn't yeah. have done it if you hadn't come along. You know. I mean, there's just yeah. so much potential to uh, you know to impact this cause. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we do some. You know, we do some local fundraisers. Okay. Um, and then you know. Anything that we can do online, it's just it's just oh, tends okay. to be easier. Yeah. As much as I love to do events, like I like I like parties, and we did like the cookie decorating <laughs> the cookie and fundraiser, and Christmas, you know the tea fun. party ones that we've done in the past, which are like so much work. And, and then I just want I basically like cried at the end of the last one because <laughs> oh. I was like so overwhelmed. But um, you know, but so anytime that people are willing to support this work. I, I don't take a salary. Where there's mo we are running out of a home office at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm using my home computer and printer. So as much as I can save this organization and keep the funds going directly to supporting the oh, donation okay. of materials, that that's my goal at this point. Wow. Now, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. How does that tie in or dovetail with the Mama Bear Effect? Are you guys jumping on the bandwagon? Or are you yes. promoting yes. for your uh, rooting for your own? We're having actually um, a pinwheel rally on the Common um, next Friday the sixth, um, just to kick it off. Um, just to, it's it's raising awareness. It's getting okay. the word out there. You know, plant pinwheel gardens in your own yard. And these are the pinwheels right yeah. here yeah. that I'm sure people have seen them around town because exactly. we've been doing okay. it for four years yep. now. So we put them in front of the schools like we're going to have uh, put them in front of the fire department, the police station. We're actually okay. having a lobby display at the library this year. Ooh. We're going to be in um, pinwheel garden in front of the post office as well. OK, well, that's cool because usually the federal buildings don't let you do anything. Yeah, I was. She, this was the first year. Yeah, I called and spoke to the postmaster general. That I, wow. Not the postmaster <laughs> general, but she was great. She's like, absolutely. You can put it, you know, behind the mailboxes right around the, the edge of the sidewalk. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, before I started the Mama Bear Effect, I did not even know about Child Abuse Prevention Month. Mm -mm. And so I'm. Until I, mean, I started the show, I didn't know anything yeah. about Awareness Month. And I'm right. like, hmm. I know. So, you know, I can't even remember how I first learned of it, but I was kind of like, oh my gosh, there's a whole prevention month. And, and all these, like, communities, mostly down south, um, do these pinwheel gardens. And I was like, we, we need to do this. So, you know, I, I reached out to the selectmen asking if I could get permission, and so Mike Runyon has been very supportive of our work and has attended a lot of the events, and so um, we've always been able to do it at the police and fire station. Oh, cool. um, so that's been great. And then this year, you know, we're branching out to doing it even in a larger scale. Yeah, you're doing scale. like a whole rally on yeah. the yeah. common. Yeah, we yeah. invited all the Girl Scouts to come. We had Adrian had patches made, you know, to sponsor a pinwheel and plant them. And wow. it was all Scouts, cool. yeah. Yeah, I know. Miss I'm really excited about the Scouts. Miss Massachusetts is coming. Miss Teen Massachusetts is coming. Mm. Yeah. 
So. Now, how do you think of these people to invite? I mean, I would have never thought to invite Miss Teen Massachusetts. We, ha I had, how do, yeah, how I had Miss Preteen Massachusetts come to the, the Valentine Tea. She had oh, reached out to us okay. and said, you know, I'd like to attend. Wow! And she was the one that read off the winners for the raffles, oh, and they okay. come with their sash. And actually, um, there's also Miss Urban Massachusetts. I had met Hoodoo. her before, and she's a, survi a survivor of child sexual abuse. Wow. And she had uh, was working with another uh, nonprofit organization too. Wow! So, but I mean, you know, and it's just a great way because they want to support causes and help raise awareness. Absolutely. And we're looking for people to come, you know, show that this is an important cause. So, wow! Um, you know, State Rep Gordon will be coming, and he's always been very supportive about abuse prevention education. Mm -hmm. He helps us um, form the coalition. Uh, within Middlesex County oh, to bring the Enough Abuse okay. campaign, which is that's where the training for the teachers is tied uh, in. Oh, okay. So, you know, just slowly, you know, you reach out to the right people, and uh, we also, I had a and meeting. And they tell two friends, and exactly. they tell two friends, right. and so on. And so the Burlington Rotary that meets on Fridays. Okay. Uh, not the breakfast rotary, but the other rotary. Okay. Um, I also did a presentation with them, mm. so um, they're looking forward to supporting it. And one of their members is also... Uh, works at the YMCA, so he was like, "Bring us a pinwheel garden. Wow. We're gonna. I want to get on board with this. You know, he's like, Excellent. I'm a papa bear, and he was sharing his <laughs> stories about things he's done. You know, to stand up for children. Okay. So, you know, it's great. It's Sweet. awesome. Now the pinwheels are blue, <laughs> but your logo is chartreuse. Yes. Why the different colors? Right. I think I feel like for a long time, people have felt that child sexual abuse, yes, is child abuse. But when you think of child abuse, I don't think you're re we're really thinking sexual abuse. We're thinking physical abuse. Right. Mental, and so, emotional. Right. Emotional, and, and, yeah. and a lot of that happens within the direct family unit, parents, step-parents. Oh, okay. Child sexual abuse prevention is so different. It's so different. And so that's why when I, when I asked Laura from Design Invasion to create the logo, she said, you know, there's no awareness ribbon for child sexual abuse, hmm. and there, there needs to be one. And so, um, you know, we um, trademarked the logo for it, and or the, the ribbon style. And um, Margaret Holzer, who is a USA gold medalist uh, swimmer, is a survivor of child sexual abuse. And she, she was uh, part of our um, release with that, the press oh, release, okay. um, you know, supporting the creation of the ribbon. Because I feel like if we're bunching things all together, just like mm -hmm. cancer, if we're saying cancer awareness, it doesn't really mean anything right. to us. Oh, okay. And so, you know, it's amazing how much has been done with breast cancer. Because so for, for so many years, women weren't even able to say that they had breast cancer because yeah. there was this the shame. Shame. Taboo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. shame, you know. And so, I mean, look how proud people are to support this cause. And, and child sexual abuse is not breast cancer. It's not right. ever going to, you know, necessarily be at that same level maybe one day. Um, because there's a, a whole other taboo associated mm -hmm. with that. Right. Um, but so it has meant so much to so many survivors to, to kind of have that se separation because the, the, the prevention is so different. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a whole other level of shame that's associated with child sexual abuse versus a physical abuse. So the level of shame, do you think it's more on the victim at that point? Yeah. Where? I, yeah regular, I, I don't want to say that, but I don't know what the correct right, terminology physical. is, just either physical or emotional abuse tends to not be the child's fault, but sometimes it is the child's fault. Or not, not no, it no, isn't, but it's never the child's fault, but it's never the child's fault, but the child might feel like, might it's feel like it. Right, right. I, I mean, like if someone said, I grew up and my dad used to beat me all the time. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's awful. I grew up and my dad sexually molested me all the time. Well, why didn't you tell somebody? Well, why why did you let that happen? Oh, uh, okay. Or, you know, like, ew. You know, mm. people just yeah. have that, like, yeah, You're oh. damaged now. Like, like that's yeah, okay. gross. Kind of, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Whereas, like, the physical abuse is people more are just like, like, put on the perpetrator that did yeah. it as opposed to the sexual. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to say that they, it's socially it's acceptable. The, yeah. it's the but, child is okay. blamed or even, you know, the, the victim is Yeah, blamed. the perversion of the abuser is, you know, wrongly put on the child as all of a sudden this bad thing has happened to you mm -hmm. and so therefore you know we don't want to associate with that you know or oh does okay. that mean that you're going to be a sexual abuser because that happened to you as a child and that's you know that's mm. one of those myths oh, that you know okay. it's still going on 
that people still hmm. ask that question very often. Wow. Um, okay. And it's not true. Wow. So. Okay. Now, I'm just looking at my notes and everything. Do you know, do you want to talk more about child abuse awareness and when did it start and why did it start? Was it just to compete with all the other awareness months or? Um, child abuse, you know, it's it's one of those things that it, it, it kind of makes you show how absurd society can be at, a t at you know, sometimes. Um, the, one of the very first cases of child abuse that actually went through the court system was back in 1874, and it was a little girl named Mary Ellen Wilson. And um, her father had died um, in, in war, okay. and so her mother had been um, had paying a woman to take care of her. And it got to the point where her mother um, could no longer care for her, and so then she went into another family, and she ended up being adopted by this couple. <laughs> Excuse me. And this couple that adopted her, the husband then died. So then the mother, who had other children, was now overwhelmed with mm. stress, and she took to abusing little Mary Ellen Wilson to the point where nothing, nothing kind was ever done to this child. She was slashed with scissors and beaten. Ooh. She was not allowed to really talk to anybody. There was nothing... She could do nothing wrong, and she could do nothing, you know. She, she Everything she did was wrong, and nothing she could do was okay. right. And so it, it got to the attention of neighbors that saw this little girl, and, and the physical abuse, I mean, was brutal. Mm. Um, and so they were reaching out to, like, the almshouses because there was no organization. I mean, a, a long time ago, their men, the mentality of let's prevent child abuse was if there were children homeless on the streets, then they would rescue them. It was kind of a rescue effort. Uh, okay. It wasn't like it was like if something happened on in that house, that was not our business. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So they were like, "What can we do for this poor little girl? This is this is not acceptable." So they reached out to the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, because there is a society Could you imagine? that <laughs> that worked. Animals so had more rights than children did. It's I, I it's <laughs> hard to even let that sentence. Sit in sit in the air and ex ex realize that. I'm surprised, but then I'm not surprised. Yeah. If that makes. But I mean, sense. even even today, it's still. I mean, you put a cute puppy on internet. Mm -hmm. You know, did you they get donate. That, did you get that piece of mail today? <laughs> did you get the one with the puppy? It was. I got a. I took a picture of it. It is a is an envelope and it has the sad looking little puppy and it says, like this puppy only had 15 seconds to live because it was in a kill shelter. Like every 15 seconds, a puppy in a wow. kill shelter dies. And you know, and I'm just like thinking, imagine if this was about child sexual abuse. People would probably be complaining. <laughs> five children mm -hmm. a, a day a in this country wow. died from child abuse. They died? At least. Wow. Those are reported cases. And how many go unreported right. too. Exactly. So I want to make sure we fit in a lot of stuff. Yeah. You had talked about an ACE study. Yes. What is the ACE okay. study? So, uh, yeah, so, so child abuse is one of those things. We all know what's going on. We don't okay. like that it's going on. And what are, what are the impacts for society and for people that are going through this? So the ACE study um, started like in the 1990s. It was a collaboration between the Center for Disease Control and Kaiser Permanente, which was a very large uh, insurance company mm -hmm. or health care company. Healthcare company right. um, and so they were doing uh, physical exams and interviews with people to ask them about adverse childhood experiences. So that's what ACEs are, adverse oh. childhood experiences, things that have gone through your life okay. that create trauma. So physical abuse, emotional abuse, um, sexual abuse, emotional neglect, physical neglect, if your parents went through a divorce during your childhood, okay. if you had a parent with depression, like severe depression, if you had a parent that had drug addiction, if a parent was in jail, if a parent committed suicide. So all these things that can have a very strong impact on a child's life. Okay. And so the, the, the reality is, is that ACEs are, are rather common, that about you know, one-third of the population has no ACEs, which is great. That's wonderful. But that um, leaves two-thirds that right, do. Right, <laughs> have at least one or more. I'm not sure I like those odds. <laughs> right, exactly. So what they came from this study, now they interviewed like over 17 thousand people mm -hmm. and did and did physical exams and everything like that because they wanted to see what the health outcomes were for these people so <laughs> the reality is is that the more aces you have 
the more you are likely to die early. If you have wow. like That's six cheery. or more aces or something, you're likely to die 20 years earlier than anyone else, than a person that has no aces. Wow. And, you know, at first they're thinking, you know, well, if you have a bad childhood, sure, maybe you're going to be more likely to smoke cigarettes and, and drink alcohol. Like, who wouldn't? But the reality is, even if you don't do those things, even if you take good care of yourself, the stress that has occurred in your body during those wow. developing years will affect your life anyway. You're more likely to be a diabetic, have high blood pressure, have cancer, have wow. all these health impacts. It just, your body, you know, there's a book called The Body Keeps Score. Mm, that okay. it, it, a, a child abuse is not just a memory that children have, it is a wound on their body. Wow, okay. And so there is um, a doctor, her name is uh, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. And so she hadn't heard about the ACE study, but she was working at this, she cre they created the Center for Youth Wellness, and they created um, a clinic for children in impoverished areas so that they could okay. have top rate care. That these were areas okay. like in San Francisco where there weren't even pediatricians. Like they didn't wow. even want to go there. So they opened up this clinic and they were so excited. We're going to give these kids amazing care. And so all of a sudden she sees all these kids coming in, coming in, being, you know, diagnosed with ADHD. And she's like, this is really strange. Like why should yeah. so many children in this area have ADHD? Like that's not, yeah. that's not, you know, it just, it's not making sense. Okay. You know? And, you know, she uses the analogy of, you know, if, if 100 people are coming to you and they're having, they're all drinking from the same well and they're coming to you with diarrhea, it's not them. You can treat the diarrhea, but there's something, you got to go take a look at that yeah, well. you got to fix the water. So okay. she goes to the root of the cause and realizes that most of these children are, are dealing with trauma at home. In a lot of cases, it's not ADHD, it's PTSD, post-traumatic stress oh, disorder. These children... Okay are not able to deal with the stress that's going on in their life. And so it's going to come out in different ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, when our brains are developing, we're making connections about how to deal with emotional responses, how to, how to make decisions, how to know when we're safe, right? That's one of our okay. most basic needs as human beings, right. to feel safe. And if a child can't feel safe at home or in their, the environment where they're growing up, mm -hmm. then they're not going to be able to go to those other levels of, you know, self-actualization. Uh, actual, so that's what's happening is that it's actually interrupting the wow. brain development, that stress. And the trauma of it is impacting them throughout the rest of their life. Now, is there any way to undo the damage or once it's done, it's... Done. No, you know what? I'm, she she wrote a book, and I, I wanted to bring it tonight, but I had to sneak out of the house before my one year <laughs> before old they noticed. noticed you yeah, I was like, I just got to get out of here. But so she wrote a book. It's called The Deepest Well, and she is addressing how we can heal the trauma that these kids are going through. Um, but one of I think the biggest challenges is we have to acknowledge that this is a real issue, and we have to support it. Okay. Because, you know, when she made this realization and then she learned about the ACE study and she's putting all these, mm -hmm. you know, okay. things together, she's like so excited and she did this amazing TED talk about it. But then Nothing not that happened. many people supported it. Right. Even pediatricians don't want to address it. Hmm. And schools okay. don't want to address it. And these are like some of the key areas where we can really impact children's lives. Wow. You okay. know, if a pediatrician has a new family come in, they can be screening the parents for ACEs because mm. there's a lot of, you know, um, oh, okay. it kind of becomes generational because, you know, when you have been dealing with stress from your own previous mm -hmm. trauma and what that can lead you to well, having you an have environment for your to, children, right? right. right? Okay. So, I mean, that was kind of one of the most challenging things about child abuse is that you have to kind of get it in with parents. Oh, okay. and, and it's easy, I think, to point the finger and say, those people don't deserve to be parents. Those people should be sent to prison for the rest of their lives or, you know, let's bring back public hangings. That's not going to save kids. No. Right. Right? We kind of have to realize and that. And even, you know, taking the child away and putting right. the kid in foster care, that's not that's a not gonna, good solution right. either. It might, it might be a safer solution sometimes, <laughs> but it's not the best solution for kids. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what's next on the list? <laughs> so what... We've talked a lot about the resources that you have available. Can we just talk about some of those resources, like what we can start to do to prevent <laughs> child abuse? So 
it, it's, it took me years to find real information about preventing child abuse, not just sexual abuse, because sexual abuse is really an awareness education okay. issue. When it comes to child abuse, I was talking with other advocates and we're just like, I just, where are these, there has to be resources somewhere about what we can do. And it's like, it's kind of one of those common sense things where it's, you know, that situation where they have the 16 kids living out in, what was it, no, was it? The 13 kids yeah. in California, California, right? California yeah, 13 kids. the Turban kids, family. The Turban family. Um, neighbors knew that there was something weird with that family. They had suspicions that things weren't right, but no one wanted to go over there. No one wanted to know. Uh, okay. You know, and so I, we but finally I don't know came about across, it. It's not happening, right? Exactly, well, because then once you know, then you feel responsible, mm. and then, you know we we don't like that because then you might actually have, have to, to do, do something, something about it. And, oh, that's uncomfortable. Okay, but so it's called the five protective factors framework. Okay, and I'm not sure if I can remember all five here, but the basic idea is we need to support families in times of crisis. Okay. So food pantries, uh, domestic violence shelters. Um, you know, homeless shelters, when a family is under stress or they're in a situation where they need help, they, they need basic resources so they can take care of their family. And a lot of times they're, they won't ask for it. Right. People are, because then they're afraid they might lose their kids or, you know, or it just might be a pride thing. They don't want to have yeah, to ask exactly. for Yeah, exactly. Our society is like, you have to be perfect. Right. You have to, you know. Well, and there's a lot of shame about, you know, taking social services that, right. oh, all these people are, you know taking advantage of the system and this and which is not really true so there's shame and there's mm -hmm. a lot of you know but okay. there's also a lack of resources I mean if you're in a situation where your you know spouse is abusive to you um, are you where, do you know where to go do you know that it's going to be a safe place because I know some people and even if like, you walk away then how do you how have do you a really roof over your away? head right. how do you, do you right survive I mean, right. right so sometimes people sometimes it's just easier to put up with what you're going through, then try to, to try to find a better solution. So and, and the also the evil too, that you know is better, better than, than the, the evil you that don't. you don't yeah. right. know. Right. Okay. Right. But also too, when families can't provide for their children, it raises stress levels. And so I think, you know, we can all, you know, talk about, you know, our spouses or ourselves, what happens when our stress levels go up, you know? At the end of the day, when mama ain't happy, yeah. nobody's <laughs> that, happy. That witching hour, like between four and six, and everyone's hungry and cranky, is not my shining moment. What, your witching hour is only two hours? <laughs> Mine's three. <laughs> but so that's us. You know what I right. mean? And I mean, we're relatively good parents. We want to be good parents. But what happens when you're under a situation? And we do have the resources. You know, right, we're fortunate right. enough and we're to not, have the resources. And we're not struggling to put food and on the support table. support systems, you know, like mm -hmm. you could call a friend, like, can I just drop the kids off for an hour? I just need a breather. When, you know, parents that don't have that, right. it escalates the stress levels up. Right. And that's, and then Jenna's touching on social connections. That there's a uh, sense of isolation. Right. That, you know, and uh, not just like in rural isolation where you're physically isolated, but having kids can be isolating. Oh, absolutely. Right? Especially absolutely. the first year. <laughs> that yeah. first year is, can be very isolating. I mean, I know, like, I wish I was one of those moms that had put the baby in the stroller and was, like, walking all over the place. I was just in-house all the time. Trying to stay afloat. I didn't want to go anywhere, you know? I just, right, like, and you don't like have anybody crap. to talk to, and, you know, you counting down the hours exactly. when exactly. my husband get like home, thank god we like had social media back then because mm -hmm. i would have felt that much more alone right. you know and, and and when my mother my I'm, I'm one of five and my mother um when she had me i was i'm the, the third child she was in ohio with my with my dad and he was working two to three jobs she didn't have a car she didn't have family near her oh, and I, and so you know now as a mother and i think about what she went through and i say to yeah. her mom how did you cope? How did you survive, survive right. that? And she was like, <laughs> How did it, we survive yeah. that? You know? She's like, Oh, it was pretty much a working depression. You know, and that's wow. really sad. That you it's know? acceptable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was depressed. Yeah. You know? Wow. But so imagine if people reached out to their neighbors, you know, so that we knew each other. And, you know, if you could have the courage to invite someone over for a cup of tea or say, Hey, do you want to go out for, you know, a walk around the block sometime or something mm -hmm. like that? Or bring over a plate of cookies or, right. you know, it makes people feel like there's someone out there that really cares for them. You know, and so imagine what it feels like to be 
you know, in a situation where you don't have access to right. resources. You're not, you can't just go sign up for mommy and me music classes. Right. You don't have those kinds of resources or you're in a relationship where you're afraid to do those kinds of things. People, we need connection. Mm -hmm. we, it's, we, we crave it. We're designed to be connected to other people. And when we don't have it, um, you know, bad things can happen. Right. You know, and then I think a huge one, too, is, you know, as we talked about before, um, education. That parental education, ex explaining to people what life is like with a newborn. What are you supposed to do when that baby's crying? What are you not supposed to do? Right. You know, and so that's There's what happens. There's no book that tells right. me. Right. And, and so when do I have time to read? Yeah. And <laughs> right. so a lot of times, like, it might be a younger parent, mm -hmm. you know, and they just can't handle that stress of that crying baby. And so... A lot of infant uh, deaths yeah. are related to uh, shaken baby syndrome. And it's not, uh, as, as much as people, you know, I, I totally get it. The anger that, that people feel towards mm -hmm. those people is totally, I, I totally get it. And but even, you know, hearing not necessarily physical damage, but like a parent might be so stressed and overworked and under slept mm -hmm. or you know they'll forget a kid in the car how can you forget a right. kid in the car but you're just your mind is right. just but so you know i think we have to realize that most of the time these people are not waking up in the morning and thinking i'm going to kill my kid today right a lot of times it has nothing to do with that it has to do with stress exhaustion um just uh, not you know just a lack rationality of rationality just goes out the window yeah so here in burlington we have the family uh, services department okay. and um, Christine Shuren, I think I pronounced her last name correctly. They do like parenting classes, like a really? parenting journey class, and you can talk. You you can you can meet with other parents and talk about what your childhood was like and what what do you want for your kid's childhood? Wow. Like I, would, I never knew I would that sign existed. Me up right now, yeah. like, <laughs> I don't want to be at home with the kids. I'm, I would like to be talking about them somewhere else and get a little break, you know. Mm -hmm. But so it's like people feel alone in that stress right you know and so having access to resources for support within the community and education wise can make a huge difference wow okay we got now, solutions here people. got solutions we got prevention <laughs> is possible <laughs> now you mentioned burlington has this family services and we talked a little bit about the mama bear effect having a national presence or it's gaining national no, um, awareness. Mm -hmm. Do you ever combine with other communities, surrounding communities? I and mean, what do other surrounding communities have? Do they have a family services thing? Do they have, you know, awareness rally, you know, pinwheel rallies? Mm -hmm. I mean, what do other communities have available for resources well that's the one thing we've been trying to work, work on this on, year yes. is reaching out and inspiring other towns communities to to do you know uh, to follow suit right how do you go about that honestly I, mean, I sat online and went down through every police department because usually we stop okay with so them. you go through the police department. the police okay. department usually um the you know uh, yeah i go through the police department reach out via email call you know social media social media through the Facebook uh, private messaging and okay. just letting them know you know Burlington does an amazing job the police even put magnets on the back of their cars we wow. do um, pinwheel gardens all over we would love to you know set your town out to do the same cool yeah so we we've been making some headway there oh, okay. you know and then I mean on a national scale um, just like through word of mouth through social right, media the social media is um, yeah it's huge and so I'm I, we're really excited because we have a donation going out to a Navajo um, Child Indian Advocacy Center, yeah, uh, oh, wow. in Arizona, and you know, it their their opportunity for resources it can be very challenging, right. you know, okay. and, and on reservations and rural areas, abuse is sky high because there's not a lot of resources for reporting, and if it's a family mm -hmm. member, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And a lot of cultural yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah norms and taboos and everything. Yeah, so and actually, I'm I'm also working on a partnership with a fellow organization up in Canada uh, called Project Roar and she's mm. a survivor and she's been speaking out and you know now that we finally have enough funds raised to okay. start making um, some significant strides I said to her I want to donate some educational materials for you 
let's get you, you know, set up and then, you know, you can sell oh, them okay. and then you'll have the funds where you can start, you know, paying for your own inventory okay. because we don't need to recreate the wheel. Right. And I, you know, and this isn't, this isn't um, an ego thing. Let's just, cre let's just get prevention out there. Okay. Like what, what people don't need to be waiting for this information. It should have been out 50 years ago and more, you know? Okay. We are almost out of time. So quickly, you wrote a book. I wrote a book. Oh my gosh. You published a book. My, my daughter likes to call me the author. Now, this is the parent <laughs> version. I mean, this is the uh, teacher version of the book. Okay. The parent version is going to be a nice, sturdy board book. Oh. Uh, because okay. this is really an Now, what is your target audience like? This is like up to toddlers to uh, okay. kind of first so like, grade-ish. Oh, okay. So this is like an introduction um, to talking about what private parts are, what constitute private parts, and what's the rules about private parts. So... There's no talk about sex. This is not about that. This is just saying that the parts of your body that are covered by a bathing suit or underwear are your private parts. And these are the parts that we don't share with other people. They're very special. And, you know, boys have, you know, in the, the parent version, we, we identify genitalia because it's for parents to talk mm -hmm. to their kids about. It's very important to use the proper words. When it comes to the teacher's edition, we, we just call them private parts because okay. it's not really a teacher's job to yeah. be talking about specific things. Right. So <laughs> children not only need to know like what the rules are, but that it's right to tell and that it's never too late to tell and that a lot of times um, abuse is, is reported by teachers. And a lot of the times uh, it happens okay. after a presentation has been made and the child realizes what's been going on to me is mm -hmm. something I need to tell and this is a safe person to tell. Okay. So there have been, um, Aaron's Law across the country has been passed in different states mandating education of children starting in kindergarten. Oh, okay. We do not have it yet in Massachusetts. A bill has been presented, a very extensive bill, um, also covering mandated training of teachers and anyone involved uh, okay. with children, whether it's youth sports. So basically anyone who yeah. has to fill out a quarry has to go through the state. Why not? What, I mean, yeah. quarries don't keep our kids safe. Right. I mean, I'm not really too worried about someone that created, you know, federal fraud or something like that. I want, I want to know who's right. a safe person for my kid. Oh, okay. But so the now board how can somebody get the book available? Yeah. So the board book is coming out um, May to June. It's in production right now. The, the, the teacher's version is available through our e-commerce site. So if you go to the mamabeareffect.org, there's a link right on the front page, oh, okay. along with information about the Pinwheel Rally and links to all our resources. So that's really kind of the, the main place to go. It's got a lot of information on there. Well, we are out of time, believe it or not. So oh, I want to thank you guys both. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. For coming. You. And I can't wait for the Pinwheel Rally on yes, April come down, 6th. Sponsor a pinwheel. The snow is melting. It is. Snow the, ground will be is gone. the ground needs the thaw. Yeah. So April 6th at 3.15 in front of Town Hall. The police chief, yeah. okay. Seattleman, Miss Massachusetts. Miss Teen right. Massachusetts. Come down. Come and check it out. Yes. It's going to be a lot of meantime, fun. Support prevention. Okay. I want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. And I will see you around town, hopefully at the Pinwheel Rally. And have a wonderful evening. Good night.